how did you personally handle being on a team that lost 50% of its, or had a 50% casualty rate? I mean, that must weigh on your mind and your heart, or is it a thing where you don't have time to think about it because you're just constantly going back out there? It's actually like a prideful thing. Like we want, we don't get to choose our wars. And every guy I guarantee you, you know, wants something like World War II. Like, I mean, once you get to where we got, we know what we can do. You know, I had nightmares of my own Delta troop coming against me when I got home because there ain't, you're not, there's no chance. When a troop hits a building, like you're, you're done. So, um, uh, where were we at? Just how you handle the trauma of losing that oh, many guys. It's a, it's like a prideful, I mean, we hit it on the board. It's just like, okay. I mean, yeah, it hurts, but like, we got to go harder. You know, I came home, my daughter was born in 05. We were on a rotation. I came home for a month. It was awesome. You know, that Delta just loves their people. People are the most important thing. It's the best place in the world to work, we would always say. And I came home and, and you know, two of my buddies were killed while I was home. And then I come back and another one's killed. So you just go harder. Like that's, are we gonna win? or or not and yeah it's a it's a, like a pride thing i think when you're when your friends die and, and th th we're going to get into the very next thing we're going to talk about pepper the the second deployment but you say you're going harder but does it become more personal as well or is it always just strictly business because as a civilian if someone killed my friends and I had the opportunity to kick in a door and I'm not trying to be a fake tough guy. I, I don't, I don't do any of that stuff, obviously, but if you killed my family members, if you killed my friend, like it'd become a personal thing to me, it wouldn't be business anymore. How did you process that? Just like you said, like, actually there was, a, there was a time where, you know, we, we had, we caught the recidivist. We had, we had captured some guys, tried to put them through their legal system. You know, I remember once there was a ranger that got shot right above his plate right here. And we just got there and there's this huge puddle of blood and uh, the, the guys, you know, we found them and they're surrendering because they won't fight and they were laughing at us. And that's when I was like, man, <laughs> this has got to change. You know, hey, boss, um, your, your intent, commander's intent says kill or capture, right? Yes. Okay. In that order, you know, and I like to ask the question with Osama bin Laden, they just, they shot him, you know, there was no, and, and nobody disagrees with that. Right. Right. So what is it? If, if you kill 3000 people, that's okay. You know, where, where's the line for, for just going in to kill somebody? It's tough freaking business. And somebody said, you know, oh, anybody can kill a caveman. How many cavemen have you killed, sir? Because it's tough and it's not natural. But F yeah, man, like you said, when they when your friends get killed or a dog gets killed, it's like it's unspoken. I mean, we just get back to our our building, we eat, we watch TV, nobody, you know, nobody's talking. And then we when we go out again. It's just an unspoken thing. And yes, it's brutal.